Hey guys, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. Today I want to talk to you about why we put in food plots. Now, let's be honest, food plots are a lot of work, but many of us that do put them in year after year consider them sort of a labor of love, and we see how effective they can be for our property improvement goals and habitat management on a whole. And I think most of us that put them in, or all of us that put them in, would agree that they are essential and the cornerstone of that property management, that habitat and that wildlife management. Now, let me explain if maybe you're on the fence about putting them in, or maybe let's just have a refresher course if you do put food plots in of like why we put them in. So first off, they attract deer, right? Like I've been hunting for, I think this will be my 25th year gun hunting. So I always thought of food plots as like sort of just like a big bait pile in the woods. Now obviously they're way more than that and the deer relate to them differently than that and they're used completely different than that. But in a very simplistic way, yes they are. They're just a big attraction, a big food attraction in the woods. And so initially when you put your food plots in they are going to attract deer it's a new attraction and it is the number one attraction out of all of the other attractions i talk about on my channel that it is the number one attraction that will draw them in the most and the most consistently and the most important thing at a specific time of day when it is still light out. That is the number one reason why they are the number one attraction. Why don't you guys let me know down in the comments if you have food plots or not, and if you do, how many acres of food plots you're managing this year. So all right, they attract the deer. Well, once you attract the deer, you can now control their daily movement. So like I just said, once you have a food plot, you can set your watch that they will come in and hit that food plot for that first feeding right before it gets dark out. So you can almost guarantee, once you have a successful food plot program, that you are going to see your doe family groups at that exact time every single day. Now getting those bucks to come in is a little more challenging those younger bucks and then getting those mature bucks to come in is even a little bit more challenging yet and there's other things we can do to improve our property outside of that food plot to get them to come in during the daylight as well but putting in a food plot you're almost guaranteed to have a doe family group on that thing during daylight hours almost every single day of course something else could happen in the woods they could get scared off by a coyote or something I have actually watched that happen from the stand before but once you can control their daily movement to that food plot, and maybe, yeah, those bucks, maybe they do get to it just after dark, but you're still controlling their movement then. Once you control their movement, you can now manage the herd as a whole. So once you're the one that's controlling where they're moving on a day-to-day -day basis, or especially where that daylight movement is happening, because who really cares where they go in the middle of the night as long as they don't get hit by a car, because nobody's going to be hunting them at that time legally anyway so you can really manage that herd if you're controlling where those deer are spending their daylight hours you can control what your harvest goals are for that entire herd you don't have to worry about a neighbor now unless you're small parcel hunting that's a completely different thing but if you have a big enough parcel where you can keep them on your property during the daylight you don't have to worry about the neighbor who's a brown it's down neighbor next door shooting everything that moves when you're controlling those deer on a daily basis during daylight hours. So once you can manage the herd, you can now maintain a healthy herd. And so what I mean by this is that by providing them food in the fall and the winter and the spring months, you're really pushing those deer and keeping them healthy through the winter when they need it most. Now, yeah, in a lot of parts of the country, they have enough food year round, but in the northern parts of the country, especially like my Northwest Wisconsin property, they need that extra food to get them through the winter. It's something like 50% of the fawns up there die if they get a bad winter, or even 50% of the yearlings will die if they get a bad winter up there. The idea of seeing like a four and a half, five year old deer up there is extremely rare because of the exposure and the predation that they deal with up there. There is just such intense weather off of Lake Superior up there that the deer have to try to survive that year in and year out. 
and having food plots and other cover and habitat improvements for them really helps to increase how many deer you take from one year to the next. And so that's why up there, what my harvest goals are for up there are different than what they are when I hunt on my southeastern Wisconsin property, because there aren't any four and a half, five and a half year old deer up there, or they're very rare, where that's a very th consistent thing to see down in southeastern Wisconsin. So just seeing those two different areas of the same state and the different herd that that terrain or that that habitat holds really is something that's important when you're thinking about food plots because food plots can increase and make for a healthier herd in that northwest wisconsin food plot or in that northwest wisconsin property in my southeastern wisconsin property i'm not expecting to put in a food plot and carry a larger deer herd into the next year those fawns will survive the winter even if their mom was shot like it's easier for them to survive down in southeastern Wisconsin than it is in northwestern Wisconsin. Like a fawn in northwestern Wisconsin that doesn't have its mom is wolf bait or is just going to die of exposure because it doesn't know where to find food in the middle of winter. Unless, of course, you're putting in these food plots and mom raised them on those food plots all spring and summer long. And hopefully those food plots are still kicking and they haven't browsed them completely down to nothing, which is another issue up there. But that gives them that year round food source or especially that fall, winter, spring food source and planting something like winter rye in those plots is extremely advantageous or another cereal grain because that will be the thing that's greenest the latest into the season. And it's also the thing that will green up the soonest in the spring. So you essentially shorten the winter for them by just a little bit. And sometimes that's all it takes for them to just make it to that next age class. And then again, you can better manage the deer herd up there because you have a higher quality herd that you've created. But because you've created a healthier herd, you now have better ma uh, management goals too. So maybe year one, you decide that you're only going to shoot the 50% top bucks in the area, right? Well, the top 50% bucks might be a six pointer and up, but after raising a healthy herd year after year, the top 50% of bucks might be an eight pointer or bigger, might be a 10 pointer or bigger. You might start talking about inches and score then after that point as well, once you start building that healthy and managed herd in that area. If you guys feel like you're getting some value from this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that this channel can continue to grow in this community and we can continue to build the knowledge that all of us in this deer hunting community have. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you on the next one.